Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. Today's community question is largely inspired by our server-side tagging in Google Tag Manager course. And let's take a look at what today's question is. How do I proxy my server-side GTM setup through Cloudflare so that it would share the IP address range with my website? Now, this would seem like an oddly detailed question to ask, but it's actually related to recent changes in the WebKit browser, such as the Safari desktop browser. Before it was possible to configure your server-side GTM with a record DNS, which means that the subdomain your server-side GTM is running on directly points to web servers in the Google Cloud Platform network. And any cookies set in responses from those servers and your server-side GTM domain would not be restricted in expiration by WebKit. A recent change has now limited how well this actually works. For the cookie expiration to not be limited, the subdomain running your server-side setup and the website communicating with the server-side setup need to share a majority of the IP address range. They essentially need to be running on the same computer network. So if your server-side GTM points directly to the Google Cloud Platform, it's very difficult to do this because your website would not be running on Google Cloud Platform servers, at least typically. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up your server-side GTM if you're already running your DNS through Cloudflare. If you're not running your DNS through Cloudflare, this video won't be very relevant for you unless you make some changes into how your domains are set up. I also want to point out that this is just a tech example. I don't recommend jumping through hoops just to get your cookie expirations back in WebKit. It's very likely that the more of these workarounds that surface, the stricter WebKit's truncation rules will be in the future. But in case you're wondering what you could do if you have the appropriate setup in place, then this video should be helpful for you. In the newest versions of the Safari browser, you can see how the server set cookie no longer has an extended expiration. In this case, we have the FPID cookie, which is an HTTP only cookie set in a server side response. It's set with an expiration of two years, but in this case, it just has an expiration of seven days. I am recording this on the 16th of May. So using a server side proxy to rewrite the cookies no longer seems to work, even though the subdomain that sets this cookie is configured with A records, so not a C name, which has been truncated for a longer time, but with actual IP address records. And the reason why this truncation happens is obvious when you take a look at the DNS records that have been set. Using the online dig DNS lookup service, the main website, simohava.com, is set with DNS A records that are directly pointing at the Cloudflare network, because I'm using Cloudflare to manage my DNS. The DNS records for the subdomain are configured to point to the Google Cloud Platform web servers because that's where my server-side GTM application is running. So because this subdomain and the main domain have significantly different DNS records, significantly different web server IP address ranges they're pointing to, Safari and WebKit browsers treat this as third-party traffic or third-party origins. And that's why they truncate the cookie expiration to just seven days even if set in the HTTP response. To solve this, we need to make sure that our subdomain DNS is also run through Cloudflare because we can then actually point the subdomain DNS records to Cloudflare's DNS range, which then proxies them to Google servers. And in this way, we can make sure that the subdomain of SGTM and the main domain of simohub.com share the main IP address range and they'll be treated as first party when WebKit determines whether or not to truncate the cookie lifetime. And to do this, you need to find the IP4 and the IP6 records in your DNS. And for each one, you need to edit them and switch the proxy on like this. And do this for all eight records. Once all eight records have been proxied, you can refresh the DNS lookup to see if it has already propagated. It might take a while for these changes to propagate. So wait patiently. So once the propagation is complete, we can compare the main domain IP range to the subdomain IP range, and we can see that the first half of the IP address matches between the two. So this should be enough 
for WebKit browsers to treat these as first party origins and not do any place any restrictions on the cookies. Before we move on, we also need to add a cache bypass rule. The reason for this is that by default, all proxied resources and get requests are cached by Cloudflare on the edge. And we don't want this. We want all of our server-side GTM resources to not be cached on the edge because there are certain processes such as preview mode, which rely on fresh resources being fetched from the server-side location. So to do this, go to cache rules under caching. And here you can create a rule and in this case, we create a rule which we've named bypass server-side GTM. And when incoming requests have a host name that equals the server-side subdomain, then we want to bypass the cache. And then we'll deploy this rule. And after doing so, Cloudflare will no longer cache your server-side GTM resources on the edge. Now, if we go to Safari, you might need to restart the browser a couple of times or just wait a moment for these changes to propagate. We can see that the FBID cookie now has the full two-year expiration time. So this way, by consolidating your main domain DNS and your server-side GTM domain DNS within Cloudflare, you can proxy both through the same IP address range and thus avoid the limitation placed by WebKit if that is what you really want to do.